things that Im- impressed us about um, Seco Sasola was its uh, revival, right? It, it there was a period where it lost its egalitarian character, mm-hmm. uh, and, and and then it got revived. Um, it was it's been really cool reading this article because it's like it's a great form of um, I feel like agitation and encouragement because there's. I was talking to someone yesterday and they have been doing they're trying to do like this horizontal group and well they've been doing a horizontal group and it's going through a challenge right now and and like I can pr- I told them I'm going to print this out and or I'm sorry I'm going to send you this article about this like this one organ this one co-op you, you know the, it got really bad but they came back from it you know like you can bounce back from stuff it's like it's a really uh, great inspiration mm-hmm. I think um, yeah things that are start up as horizontal they can go vertical but you know people can reverse that um and i don't think i've talked about it yet but one thing that's pretty cool about that about their whole um revival is how it was connected to this broader social struggle and how like that broader social struggle is kind of like what gave them um the energy or something i don't know It, it you know that's something i don't quite understand like the dynamics of society as a whole on you know, I guess there they are. I, it seems like I guess there are like bigger social spirits, or like there's like there's a bigger social spirit or something that does does affect the consciousness of smaller groups in in society and the individual. Um, but that was that was really cool how like the the social struggle is what like amplified them, or, or rather like catalyzed them to go back in and 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 put things right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because they started out very grassroots, and then when they got a little successful, they you know uh formalized and got their structure and you know now they they've moved back um after in, in after you know a, how five years or what however many years they had being a, a more standard organization um yeah so yeah you're right it is definitely hopeful because it's uh we certainly see some of those dynamics here in you know the u.s and i think everywhere that's just maybe a I don't know if it's a human thing or def- or just something in, in, in our society but it seems like anytime you have any organization that gets to a certain size or has a certain level of sway or pull or budget or something that you know it is uh, and again I don't want to be the like uh, super naysayer about everything but you know you attract people to those you know organizations the positions in those organizations who are looking for look th- this way in the budget and stuff you know and maybe the the mission might be a little bit on the secondary side so um you know it's one thing i like about the, the their model in not having a ceo not having a board of directors that you know anybody who might be interested in trying to get involved with this you know organization just as a way to you know because they're trying to climb the career ladder or something they're not going to show up at all like you don't have to worry about not letting them make over if you know your structure is such that like there is no place to advance to um like that yeah i think that's really amazing and it would be worth exploring that whole process that they took to go from you know the hierarchy to complete collective leadership you know what were some of the struggles i'm sure some people felt like their jobs were necessary and things would would fall apart and that's the other good thing about this is that they didn't like just go away they re you know reinvented themselves even after all of those problems they i guess there was a need we have to fix fix this we have to figure it out and they did and so it would really be worth looking at, you know, if we can, how that happened. Because I could foresee, not that I'm a fortune teller, but you know, you kind of worry about where things are headed, that we may have to do similar kinds of things. You know, how to um, let everybody know that everybody's equal here. <laughs> and everybody has to work and do everybody's job so that you really understand the necessity of how things work and, um, you know, being able to fill in if somebody can't make it, all of those things are very important. So I don't know if, if we can, it would really be good maybe to interview some folks uh, to get more information. 
Yeah, if y'all do that interview, I think that would be a really important interview too. If y'all do it, I, I'd be I'd be really curious to hear about um, the topic of fear. Uh, I've never thought about like just talking about fear, um, mm-hmm. but there was I have a uh, there's a Chicagoan uh, named Faye Porter. She's a tenant union organizer, and one time she like proposed like we should talk about fear um, for tenants when talking together. Um, and I was like, man, that's a really good idea, fear. Um, and this context, I think it would be cool to also talk about fear of your peers. Like, was there fear of your peers? Um, you know, because the hierarchy was probably also considered peers, too. Um, to pursue, I think, uh, to pursue the reality that a lot of times we also do give up our power. Um, and, like, I guess that's another topic to pursue, too. Were people giving up their power? We you know was it because um, I the, the way that power manifests or hierarchy manifests it's it's very complex and I'm I'm always trying to understand it but I see people every day giving up their power and it seems like the easier thing to do um, mm-hmm. and sometimes you know I got to think about it too I, I think about that am I giving up my power um, sometimes maybe I do yeah I think it's easy to do when you have fear. Like if you are not feeling that confident in, in yourself and your skills, your ability to run things. And a lot of us don't have experience running things. So here we are, we at a co-op or we're in something where we're the ones responsible for doing everything or making sure it gets done. And some people are kind of a little shy about that. And it, maybe it's a fear that I might do something wrong or I might have to, um, tell somebody something that they may not want to hear but we have to like push through that fear we have to try and um do something and that helps us get more confident um uh, especially that thing about fear of making a mistake you know um mistakes aren't the the worst thing so yeah i think a lot of us give up power because we think we can't run something we think we can't do something or that we might make some fatal mistake. And, you know, that's not the case because you have your, uh, your comrades right with you and everybody's talking about things. And so different people will see different angles and sides and might see a hole or somewhere that, that won't work. And so we're actually in a better position than having one CEO or two or three making all the decisions. If we have 10 or 15 people They have a whole multitude of experiences that they can bring to that decision-making point. And so there's not a whole lot of reason to fear. I mean, that's a lot Mm -hmm. of reasons to be confident because we're going to cover every angle. So, yeah, I think it would be good to to talk about these fears. And, yes, I totally agree. We give up a lot of power. I've seen that so many times. So many ways. Yeah. I mean, it's... Uh, it's what we're in, inculturated to do, um, you know, in all of our, you know, you know, most of the organizations that we're involved at, involved in uh, throughout our lives, at least until we get into co-ops, are are very hierarchical, and and so I mean, it can be. I think there's fear just around, you know, for a lot of people, just around adopting a different structure, doing things in a you know a less hierarchical way. Um, because we're so it's just unfamiliar right and and we're afraid of what we don't know and and uh, we live in a highly individualistic uh, culture as compared to say someplace like uh, Venezuela for instance Um, so you know we might have obstacles to overcome just culturally like that that they don't have quite so many of them.